like a finger pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.
Hello, everybody. And happy Monday. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Good morning. So a quick hello to Lightning and hello to Gogs and a hello to C-Dubs. Thank you guys for coming out. Like I said, I hope everybody had a good weekend. But it's the start of the week, and because my birthday's on Tuesday, I decided to take today and tomorrow off of work so that I could just pretty much do whatever the hell I want. And whatever the hell I want is to stream some video games for you guys. I recently acquired an Elgato capture card and a Retro Tink 2X Mini, so I figured, uh... Really, Lightning? Your birthday's tomorrow? Well, happy birthday. We are birthday buddies for life, man. Actually, growing up, uh, there were two other people in school that had the same birthday as me. We all had the same classes together, so it was, uh, it was fun celebrating our birthdays. So yeah, uh, like I was saying, a recently acquired Elgato Capture Card and a Retro Tink uh, 2X Mini. So uh, I can actually stream uh, my consoles if I want to. So I figured I'd give the N64 a try today. Now, I don't know how many of you have an... In Who has a Nintendo 64? Actually, better question yet, who had an N64 when it first came out at launch? Somewhere. <laughs> Wait a minute. C-Dub. Okay, yours is in storage, so you still have it. Christmas 96. So when the N64 came out, I was a... Freshman or sophomore in high school and I was generally known as the video game person within my group of friends but for whatever reason everybody else had an N64 except for me my parents wouldn't get me one for Christmas or my birthday so I basically had to play N64 over at their place if I wanted to play it Fortunately, my friends were cool enough to where if they were going away for a weekend or they were like busy doing something else, they would let me borrow their system. So I still got to play it even though I didn't own it. So I was super excited about that and really appreciative of my friends for letting me borrow their systems when they weren't going to be playing them. So, But I eventually got one, Christmas in 98. My mom finally buckled down and got me one. She probably got a good deal on it, which is why she got it for me for Christmas. It was my Santa gift. And yeah, she got me the, uh, I think it was the, the Jungle Green is what this one's called. It was the first translucent N64 system uh, that came out. Came with uh, a copy of Donkey Kong 64 and the expansion pack, the RAM expansion pack. So yeah, that's the N64 I have. Now, I don't have too many games, and I actually realized yesterday that I'm missing Goldeneye, which I know for a fact I own, but I have no idea where it is. I actually reached out to a buddy of mine, um, and I wanted to know if maybe he accidentally grabbed it uh, the last time I was with him and we were playing that game which I think was my bachelor party honestly yeah you, you needed the expansion pack for a couple of uh, games but um, other than that and actually I think the only reason 
for the expansion pack was the fact that Donkey Kong 64 had a game breaking bug. And the only way they could figure out to fix it was by increasing the RAM. <laughs> so that's why they shipped it with the uh, the RAM expansion for free. Because you literally can't play the game without it. Because of a game breaking bug. Yeah, I eventually ended up uh, buying a charcoal gray one, and actually, Gogs, uh, interesting story. So, I bought a factory sealed um, N64 off eBay a couple years ago. I think I bought it for $300 or $315. But it's factory sealed, it's one of the NS1 models, so it's a, a an early launch N64. And I wanted that specifically because I wanted to do an RGB mod for it. But I haven't opened it yet. But was what was interesting about this eBay purchase is it actually came with the purchase receipt. And I think the receipt was from Walmart. And it was dated December 15th, uh, 1996. So, Gogs, you getting yours at Christmas made me uh, think about that. So I have that and a bunch of actually uh, factory sealed Nintendo 64 games, which I can show you guys here in a little bit. But uh, I bought all that because I planned on doing kind of a special cast at some point. Where I would just open all the factory sealed stuff and just play it. Because I have a very weird thing about buying used games. I don't know, it just like I can't do it because I don't know if you've ever bought used games. But the way people take care of their games can be like, like people really mistreat their video games. Like they're all dirty and gross looking and they got Sharpie written on them and labels are all fucked up and they look like they've just been like chilling in the fucking dirt. And it's gross and like, I can't bring myself to buy them. So basically, if I'm gonna buy old retro games, I'm gonna buy them factory sealed and open them up and play them. Or I'll just buy one of those, uh, what are they? Um, shit, what the hell are those flash carts? That's what they're called. I'll buy a flash cart and just throw all the N64 games on there because I have them. I have all the ROMs. So, so I only have open at the moment one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and sixty-four games. So I'm gonna let you guys decide what we play. Probably won't play them all today, but we can play some stuff. Whatever you guys want. I don't know, maybe, maybe if I'm feeling generous, maybe I'll open up uh, a factory sealed one. I, I have, I actually have a factory sealed Banjo-Kazooie that, that I know C-Dub would be, uh, would be really happy if I, if I open that one up and uh, play that for him. Because I've actually never played Banjo-Kazooie. And I bought it because, you know, I wanted to play it. So let's switch over to Cam. So I can show you what I got. So, as you can see, I got my N64 games all in these really nice cases. They're those cases that can hold like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and even PlayStation discs, which is weird. It's kind of a big thing for a PlayStation disc, but eh. So this is what I got. I got, of course, the classic, the game everybody needs is some Mario 64. Yeah, these cases aren't too expensive. I mean, you can find them on eBay for pretty cheap and, and they do a great job of keeping, uh, um, you know, your games protected. Uh, I'd say the only issue is, is that, um, you know, considering how small the cartridge is compared to the, you know, the actual case, they do take up a lot of space. 
So uh, that would probably be the only issue I have with them. If these were a little smaller, like if these were specific for N64 games and they were just slightly bigger than the cartridge, I'd say they'd be a little bit better. But, uh, you know, at least they're uniform size, exactly. So yeah, we got some Mario 64. We got Pilot Wing 64, which I've never actually played before. We got Mario Kart 64. We got my buddy's Jacob, his jam, the new Tetris. This is actually a really awesome version of Tetris, if you guys never played it. We, of course, have the Gold Kart, Ocarina of Time, as well as the Gold Kart with the awesome hologram of Majora's Mask. Here, let me pull that out real quick. Maybe you can see it a little better. It's kind of showing up. You can kind of see the 3D. But yeah, that was definitely a nice little touch for the cart. We got Castlevania, which I know is a terrible game, but I'm actually interested to play it because I have also never played this. And then I got Donkey Kong 64. So not much, I know, but it's enough for a stream. So I guess the question is, what does everybody want to see first? Start with Mario 64. Does anybody else have a retort to that? Start with the tried and true. Yeah, we, we ain't gonna be speed running shit. Now we'll play it for, uh, you know, probably about an hour and then move on to another game. Or less, I don't know. Maybe do only half hour, 45 minutes, I mean, I'm completely open to doing whatever. Also, check out the sleeve I got for my controller. I got this from those uh, Nintendo Power catalogs back in the day. It kind of sags a little bit here over the C buttons, you can kind of see. But uh, overall, it does keep your hands feeling not sweaty if you're doing an intense gaming session. Yeah, otherwise it'd be the only game you play all stream. Yeah, no, we're definitely not going to take it to completion. <laughs> this isn't going to be like Batman, where I start the game and I finish it. Though I wanted to do that for Batman, just because I had never played it. And I'm glad I did. Gogs was there, C-Dub was there. They saw the, the epicness of the win. But man, my thumb was killing me after that stream. Oh my God, I was hurting. All right, so it looks like the consensus is gonna be some Mario 64. And then uh, we can switch it up to something uh, in about, I don't know, an hour. Let's jam that in the slot. And then we'll switch the scene over. Laundry rotation. Though I'm kind of digging this Mega Man 2 remix. Turn that up a bit. Yeah, if you guys are a fan of video game music, go check out uh, Overclocked Remix. They got a bunch of good stuff over there. Yeah, Gus is over there sniffing my backpack, my work backpack. I definitely like the remixes that uh, include the different... Uh, 
sound effects and noises for the game that they're doing a remix for. Definitely gives the music a little character. Oh, also, I don't know if you've noticed, but you should be able to see that, uh... The subscription button should be active. So I don't know if anybody can see the emotes that I created. Well, it only let me do one, first off, which is fine. So I don't know if anybody could see that one emote or use it. I wasn't able to use it on my own channel for whatever reason. I don't know if that means it's not active yet. Maybe it's only for subscribers? I don't know. But I do have a badge. Let's see. It's... Sh Yo, boy. Kuros. Yeah, you should be able to see the little badge next to my name. That's Kuros. Portrayed by the... Very talented, very beautiful Fabio Lanzoni, who I am nicknamed after, by the way. Courtesy of my friends. Uh, they probably have to do a check then. But for whatever reason, the, the subscriber badge is there and working. So that's from Iron Sword 2. I'll figure out some other stuff to do for the badging and stuff later, but all right, let's actually start playing some games. Ooh, I can smell the wife uh, lighting some candles. All right. So I need to, okay, I should just be able to turn it on. Uh-oh. We were seeing this problem yesterday. Hold on. To solve it, I basically just unplug it and replug it back in. All right. Should be in color now. Problem solved, bitches. Yep. <laughs> when in doubt, restart your machine. So hopefully the video quality should be pretty good. Um, the N64 only outputs S-Video unless you do an RGB mod for it, which you can do for, I think all systems they have an RGB mod for now. Uh, the translucent and the charcoal gray ones. Uh, but I don't have it done yet, so we have to stick with S-Video. But I think it looks pretty good. I got, uh, one of those nice, uh, S-Video monster cables that I bought back in the day for, like, 30 bucks or something like that. So, it will have to do. Alright, so now I actually have to change the output on my monitor. to HDMI. Cool. So you can see I have two files over here already. So the question is, file A or file B? Hey guys. I know, it's a tough choice. File A, you get to play Mario 64. But file B, you also get to play Mario 64. But under file B. 
flip a coin. I'm gonna go with B. Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool. Peach. So is everybody ready to see a world recce? I didn't have a coin on me. You know, I probably could have flipped the cat. Tails, B, head. Well, my cat's probably dead at that point. <laughs> Yahoo! Ciao. You've reached Princess's, Princess Toadstool's castle via warp pipe. Using the controller is a piece of cake. Press A to jump and B to attack. It's been a while since I've actually read this, so we're just going to read it. Press B to read signs too. Use the control stick in the center of the controller to move Mario around. Now head for the castle. Princess Toadstool's castle is just ahead. Yeah, the cat would probably not appreciate that. I definitely, well, there's coins in the desk behind me. We have a little jar filled with coins. Keeping the pennies and then all the silver coins separate, of course. A to jump, Z to crouch, B to punch. Read a sign or grab something. Press B again to throw something you're holding. I always like this move. Little break dance. <laughs> Good afternoon. The Lakitu brothers here reporting live from just outside the princess's castle. Mario has just arrived on the scene and will be filming the action live as he enters the castle and pursues the missing power stars. As seasoned cameramen, we'll be shooting from the recommended angle, but you can change the camera angle by pressing the C buttons. If we can't adjust the view any further, we'll buzz. To take a look at the surroundings, stop and press up C. Press A to resume play, switch camera modes with the R button. Signs along the way will review these instructions. For now, reporting live. This has been the Lakitu Brothers. Welcome. No one's home. Now scram and don't come back. <laughs> Talk with Toad here. Am I glad to see you? The princess and I and, well, everybody. We're all trapped inside the castle walls. Bowser has stolen the castle stars, and he's using their power to create his own world in the paintings and walls. Please recover the power stars. As you find them, you can use their power to open the doors that Bowser has sealed. There are four rooms on the first floor. Start in the one with the painting of Bob Oms inside. Bob Oms. It's the only room that Bowser hasn't sealed. When you collect eight power stars, you'll be able to open the door with the big star. The princess must be inside. And long jump into the painting. This is actually one of the first video game soundtracks I owned. The other being Chrono Trigger. Wow, you're smack in the middle of the battlefield. You'll find the power stars that Bowser stole inside the painting worlds. First, talk to the Bob-Om buddies. Press B to talk. 
he'll certainly help you out, and so will the comrades in the er oh, comrades in other areas. It'd be silly to twist. It'd be a silly twist if that was literally where the game ended. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> Eight stars and you're done. It'd be a lot easier of a speed run, that's for sure. Read sign, stop, face them, and press B. Press A or B to scroll ahead. You can talk to some other characters by facing them and pressing B. Let's see what these guys gotta say. Watch out, if you wander around here, you're liable to be plastered by a water bomb. Those enemy bob love to fight, and they're always finding ways to attack. This meadow has become a battlefield ever since the big bob got his paws on the power star. Can you recover the power star for us? Cross the bridge and go left up the path to find the big bob -omb. Please come back to see me after you've retrieved the power star. Hey you, it's dangerous ahead, so listen up. Take my advice. Cross the two bridges ahead, then watch for falling bombs, water bombs. The big bub bomb at the top of the mountain is very powerful. Don't let him grab you. We are bub bomb buddies. And we're on your side. You can talk to us whenever you'd like to. Like right now? Let's see. These are probably all just teaching us how to play the game. Stand in front of it, press B. Like you just did now. To a Koopa Troopa or other animal, stand right in front of it. Please recover the stars that were stolen by Bowser in this course. Cool, let's go fight that bob -um. Oh, snap! I totally forgot that was a warp zone. Welcome back, C-Dub. Whoa. Looking at chat, not paying attention. And then, of course, you guys probably know about this one. I'm the big bub -omb, lord of all blasting matter. King of Kabooms, the world over. How dare you scare my mountain, or scale my mountain. By what right do you set foot on my imperial mountaintop? You may have been eluded by my guards, or you may have eluded my guards, but you'll never escape my grasp. And you'll never take away my power star. I hereby challenge you, Mario. If you want the star I hold, you must prove yourself in battle. Can you pick me up from the back and hurl me to the royal turf? I think you cannot. What a dumbass, he's telling us how to beat him. I forget what happens when he picks me up. We'll just wait for him to waddle on over here. Nice and slow. Okay, come on. There we go. I think if you throw him off, it does something funny. Like, I think he jumps back up. Let's see what happens. Just because I forget.
You must fight with honor. It is against the royal rules to throw the, throw the king out of the ring. Almost got my ass grabbed by this king. He's going to throw me. I was wondering if I could slide through his legs or something like that. What? what? Can it be that a pip squeak like you has def uh, defused the Babom King? You might be fast enough to ground me, but you'll have to pick up the pace if you want to take King Bowser by the tail. Methinks my troops could learn a lesson from you. Here is your star, as promised, Mario. If you want to see me again, select the star from the menu. For now, farewell. And then he commits seppuku. Here we go. And that's the end of the game, guys. That's Super Mario 64. You recovered one of the power stolen power stars. Now you can open some of the sealed doors in the castle. Try the princess's room on the second floor and the room with the painting of Womp's fortress on floor one. Bowser's troops are still gaining power, so you can't give up. Save us, Mario. Keep searching for stars. Why don't we do that? Oh, triple jump. We know how to do all this, though. Watch. Uh, princess's doors up here. Generally, when I play this game casually, I'll start at one level and I'll get all the stars and then move on to the next one. Reacting to the star power, the door opens slowly. Or the door slowly opens. Whoa, hold on. OBS says it just crashed. Uh, do I want to say yes? 